In this tutorial, we are not going to be adding any new APIs to the Messenger application. Instead, what I want to focus on is a couple more annotations that you can use to inject some more values. So if you look at the message resource, uh, resource class, you can see that all these values are actually being injected to the methods in our resource handling class. So we looked at um, path param, we looked at query param, there are a few more things you can access from the HTTP request. Uh, I'm going to create a separate demo resource to show you what they are. We're not going to be using them in the Messenger application, but they're a good thing to know because you would have a lot of opportunities to use them and um, access those values from the request. So I'm going to create a new resource um, class. I'm going to call this inject demo resource. So I'm going to click finish and uh, copy over these annotations, uh, which I'm going to annotate at the class level. I'm going to call this inject demo. So it's a separate endpoint where I can demo all these different ways to inject values. And uh, I'm going to use plain text here uh, for the request and the response. I'm going to be rendering JSON. So the one thing that I want to demo is a lot of the annotations that let you access these parameters. So we've looked at query param and path param. There are a few more of these param uh, annotations that you can use. Uh, one example is what's called matrix param. So let me create a new method over here. Get params using annotation. I'm just going to return return an empty string for now. And uh, I'm going to expose this at the endpoint. Of course, I'm going to do a get. I'm going to expose this at the endpoint annotations. Okay, so I'm going to just return test to make sure this works. Now, if I access this URL and do a get request, well, I get the test message back. Make sure your header is clear. You don't want to send accepts uh, JSON because we are just dealing with plain text in this in this tutorial. So, well, this works. Now, what are, we, what are the parameters that we can access? The first one is called matrix params. Matrix params are very similar to query params, but they have a different, slightly different format. So it's uh, in query params, you would do something like this, right? Param equals value. So in the case of matrix params, it's separated by a semicolon. Uh, this is the only difference. Well, there is actually one more semantic difference and I'm not going to get into the details of that, but some people use it. It's not as widely used, but it is a way to send parameters in URLs. And uh, Jack Saras and Jersey have a way to access matrix params. And that's actually very similar to the way you access query params. So the way to do that is using an annotation called that matrix param and I pass in the value as an attribute and then accept it. I'm going to call it matrix param and I'm going to return the same matrix param. I'm going to import this from the same package and uh, if I try this again and there you go, you get the value that we send. So this is um, this is one way in which you can pass parameters. I don't know if you're ever gonna be using this, but if you ever use matrix params, this is the way to do this. Uh, the other parameter that you can access is header parameters. So you see this, there's this header section where we said uh, you know the content type and all that stuff. You can actually send custom header values, and that's gonna be very handy when we handle authentication and security and all that stuff, right? You can have the client send custom values in the header, right? So I can have something like a custom header value and then uh, the value being sent could be like 200 or something like that, right? So we need to be able to access the custom headers and um, 
Jack Saracen jersey has a way to do that as well. And that's again using an annotation on a method argument. So I'm going to use at at header param and then the parameter name is this whatever whatever you want right whatever custom value you access uh, I'm gonna accept a string and uh, import this and then of course if I print this it's gonna show up accepts the header and now if I send this value let's say I send test value and I hit send it's gonna get that header param so this header param is something that you might use more uh, at least as more than the matrix param so you would typically use header param to send uh, metadata about the request like the authentication token or something like that and you can create your own auth session ID as a parameter and send in some uh, some token value and then be able to access it by just accessing this over here right and then you can you can get hold of that token and then check for authentication and all that stuff so so that's something that's good to know all right so the third thing that you can access is the cookie value so I'm gonna add the third annotation cookie param and uh, give the cookie name and I can access the cookie so I'm going to import this let's look at a cookie that's already here so I have a test cookie over here with the name name and the value being hello so I can access that over here so I just pass in the cookie name here it's name and uh, I can get the value of that cookie. So I'm gonna just print that out. And uh, if I access this again, I get the cookie value. So we have got three different parameters. We have the matrix param, we have the header param, and the cookie param to get the cookie. These annotations are in addition to the path param and the query param annotations that we've already seen. There's one more that I haven't covered, which is called form param. This is when you want to access form submissions. So in HTML, you, ha you can have an HTML form, and then when you submit it, the values go as key value pairs, right? So there is a key, which is the name of the control, like a text box or something like that. And the value being the value of the text box. So if you want to capture requests like that, which is being sent from an HTML form to a REST API, you would use form param. Uh, it's not very widely used and you wouldn't usually submit uh, data to a REST API using an HTML form. So it's not as, uh, as widely used, but it is there. That's one of the annotations. So these are, all these are called the param annotations, which let you, which let you kind of cherry pick the kind of uh, data that you want from the request. If you know beforehand what the attribute is and how it is being sent, it's very simple to access that in your controller just by putting that annotation and having uh, you know, a method argument which gets that data for you.